What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. That was a little weird. My YouTube side was flipping out. I hope you're seeing me okay. And again, welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. Thank you so much for coming out. We got a couple of things to talk about today, so it's going to be kind of a two-parter. Uh, we obviously got to talk about the FCC request for info, uh, request for comments on the $50 licensing thing that's going down, and also we're going to talk about the Tiny SA. SA stands for Spectrum Analyzer. I've already been having a lot of fun with it, but one of the things that we can do with it, because it is a standalone device that has its own power supply via a battery, I can put it in my trash can, and I can hit my trash can with some hot RF. And we're going to be testing it today. See what the attenuation value is of my EMP tactical trash can. So thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And what is up, everybody? Thanks so much for coming out again to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Again, the Ham Radio Crash Course is all about kind of creating a inclusive space. And I don't know that get, that term gets thrown around a lot. But what it means really is that we're cool with your questions. We're not going to give you a hard time. I try to answer everybody in the comments today on Instagram. I was taking Q&A questions and replying in my stories. I do that, you know, maybe once a month or once every two months. If you haven't checked that out, go follow me, Hashnasi, on Instagram, where I do all that fun stuff for answering Q&A. That is, uh, that's a lot of fun because I, I can do like 15-second answers, which is, is really nice um, in a lot of situations to kind of go direct to people with specific questions. And sometimes I'll do two-parters and whatnot. That helps out a lot, I think, for, for people. So make sure to check that out. Anyway, we got a lot of, uh, we're going to be all over the place today, but this is more going back to like when I started these live streams. I did a lot of just like point a camera at something and let's walk through it. So I'm going to be rocking the uh, the wide desk camera. I'm going to be rocking the overhead camera and I'm going to be rocking the me camera <laughs> uh, for this tiny essay thing that we're going to be covering because the, the trash can is just so big. It's it's a little too big for the, the, the desk, but it's going to be a lot of fun to, to check it out. RC Craft uh, sends a super chat. What do you think of the 705? Would you buy it? Yes, I have my pre-sale in. Um, I've pre-ordered it. In fact, I believe HRO already charged me for it. And uh, yeah, I'm down. I mean, I kind of have to be down because I'm on YouTube and it's a really popular radio. There's going to be a lot of interest in it. Regardless, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so I'm going to be taking advantage of that for sure. And Filomino sends a $4.99 super chat. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. What's up with Josh's hair? I don't know. I, I put some stuff in it today. So that's uh, that's why I did that. Hey, really quick, uh, let's do this. I forgot to set this up beforehand. I'll let you guys decide. What do I? What am I gonna crack into today? Am I gonna crack into the Mammoth Brewing? Mammoth Brewing Layer of the Bear Barrel Aged Imperial Stout. Or this one was really funky looking. This is the Legend of Ur which is a kettle soured porter with juniper, pear, peach, and vanilla. Whoa. I'll let you guys decide. I'm kind of leaning toward the legend of Ur. Off topic, can the SDR G90 be opened up to be an all-band radio? Good question. I don't know, Terry. That's a, that's a really good question. Uh, legend James Hannibal, I think you got the right idea. I think I got to go legend of the Ur. Yeah, that thing's – I don't know what's going to happen with that thing. Pot, sour, what? Uh, Porter, I don't even know. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go into that one. So I'm going to break out my, let's do this uh, with the wide shot here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, Legend of the Ur. The G90 is easy to open up. I don't know if that means physically in the case or uh, physically in uh, in the sense that you can, you can go ahead and do some fun stuff that way. Um, I don't know what that means. Like frequency open? I hope that's what it means. Oh, band coverage. That's awesome. I'll look into that and see how easy it is. All right. It's, it's a porter, so it's still going to be kind of on the dark side. It looks a little light. It looks like a Coca-Cola, like you can see into it. Porters are usually... Oh, man, I can smell it from here. Holy smokes. Ay, ay, ay. So there's... It looks like a Coke, doesn't it? Anyway. Anyway. 
Whoa. It's a sour porter. <laughs> it's a sour porter. Wow. Uh, it's really light. It's got a lot of caramel, and it's sour. It's pretty good. It's got a nice little back-end finish. Mammoth Brewing is, I, I'm assuming, Mammoth, California. Mammoth Brewing, Mammoth Lakes, which is uh, up, up north of me. I used to go skiing in June Mountain all the time. What a funky beer. Mm. Okay, with that said, let's uh, let's talk about this. By the way, I'm probably going to repost this as a standalone video for my thoughts because they're going to talk about it for a little bit. But the FCC, and I'm pulling this from the ARRL news site. I am a member of the ARRL, and I support what they're doing. Uh, I am really interested to see what their reaction is to this uh, to this whole thing. The FCC is proposing to reinstate amateur radio service fees. Once upon a time, there were fees associated with you getting your license. And remember, I need to clarify, when you go take your practice or your, your exam, the VEs, the volunteer examiners, they usually take some amount of money. Some don't take any, but some do take some money for administrative fees. It doesn't go to the FCC. From the FCC's point of view, it's free, basically, to them. The FCC is proposing, though, based off of this Ray Bomb Act, that they will start to um, go from a congressionally mandated fee structure to a cost-based system of assessment in the NPRM. The, N the FCC uh, proposed up application fees for a, brand, a broad, I don't know why I'm stumbling all over myself, broad range of services that uses the FCC's universal licensing system, including the amateur radio service that had been excluded by an earlier statute. The 2018 statute excludes the amateur radio service annual regulatory fees. Now, I, I, I pulled this up because I want to I wanna quote this exact thing, which is really important right here. Applications for personal licenses are mostly automated and do not have individualized staff costs for data input or review, the FCC said, and it's NPRM for these automated processes, new major modification, renewal, and minor modifications we propose a nominal application fee of $50 due to automating the process. Okay, so they're um, basically saying that they would like to add a $50 fee to getting your license and your renewal. Now, I will give you both arguments, right? Because I can kind of see this coming from both ways, and I'll actually pull it up here. So here is, here's the fee, and if you go to uh, amateur... There's the, there you go right there, personal, there you go. New license modification, cost base fee is 50. This is not the right one. Where is it? See, because this is going to be all of the licenses that the FCC currently handles. I got to find the $50 one now, but basically it's $50. You get the idea. No, that's an FM for station. AM. See, they're all in here. So cable, um, TV, whatever's over the air, not even over the air. New station. Yeah, we don't need that. See, there's a lot of them in here. Um, so again, there, it, it, I should have just went to the top. <laughs> I, I made this more difficult for myself. Now we're back at the top. Let's go back. Assignment of code, domestic, killing me. Why are you no find? Oh, because I didn't spell it right. That helps. Personal licenses. Okay, so um, basically it's $50. That's what they're charging. I'll just simplify it. I'm probably even pulling up the wrong thing. So I think immediately right up front, this will drive people out of the hobby. Uh, people will choose not to get their license. What will they do? They'll bootleg. Straight up. That's the, the really quick boom. There you go. The question I have, though, is, is what does this actually go into? Like, what would this $50 do? Would this improve the FCC's ability to pursue people that are uh, jamming others, that are, that are being malicious on the bands? If the answer is no, and this is purely to automate the process of how licenses are 
handed out or renewed or whatever, then that's largely something that will be recouped over time based off of the automated services by you not having to spend for a human being to go through and literally type stuff up and write stuff down. So I, I don't see the point for it. Flying Squirrel with the Super Chat. Hey, Josh, thanks for the advice and opinions. Really liking the latest content. Pace, EMP proofing, SAR comms, and the latest soda net. Hey, thank you so much, Flying Squirrel. I appreciate it. So no, fifty uh, fifty dollars. Someone said is is isn't nominal. Yeah, again, I I need to be I need to be objective as I can here. It's a fifty dollar fee, and then you don't pay that again for ten years. So it's five dollars a year. Is that it, that's not impossible to deal with? I don't have a huge problem with it, but I think it's creating a barrier that doesn't need to exist. I don't see the compelling reason for this. I don't think that should exist. I don't think this should be a, a, a thing at all. Now, um, I think Sterling's in the chat. He might be. Sterling, man. Uh, Sterling has been all over this, and, and he's been talking about it a lot recently, and I, I agree with everything he's been saying. I would like to see two things. Um, I'd like to see arguments proposed by the ARRL, actually a letter of what they you know, would like everyone to say. And if you agree with it, you should be able to copy it and submit it. By the way, link is in the description if you want to go to the FCC site and voice your opinions to them. And I suggest you do. They are accepting comments. There's no due date to the comments, so it's up to you to go out there and, and give your thoughts. The other thing Sterling mentioned, which I, I agree with him, is that if this does come to pass, I would like to see the ARRL or some other groups sponsoring to pay or electing to pay the $50 for some new hams, particularly young new hams. That would be a nice thing to see. That's not a defeatist attitude, but it long-range thinking, I think that's a smart way of looking at it. So kudos to Sterling on coming up with that one. Yeah, so I'm, I'm generally against it. I think that it is one extra barrier to get people engaged in something that, if you trust what the government says, is supposed to be a service, at least partially a service. Sounds like they may not be thinking it is so much anymore. Or they're just trying to simplify the whole thing and automate as much as possible, and they're like, eh, this amateur radio stuff, let's make it the same thing. Again, this could be like the California Cal Fire thing where they just don't understand what ham radio is or what it's all about, and they just don't get it. Uh, another super chat in there. Let me hit that up really quick. Adventure Team DML got my license in June because of HRCC. Now I own four radios and a scanner and two SDRs and a hotspot and six antennas. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. And I appreciate the 762 uh, for the super chat there. <laughs> my favorite caliber. Actually, both for uh, 39 and, and 52. Yeah. Anyway. Or is it? And it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, now, I, I did. Uh, I, I also threw this in here. Where is it? So here's the filing that you would do. Now, you're going to have to look up the proceedings, which, again, if we go up back up here. Doo -doo -doo. Let's see. Notice of rulemaking. Usually there's a number. Docket number 2027. So I believe if you go here you can type in the proceeding or, or something along those lines and you can reply directly to it. They don't make it easy for you. I promise they don't make it easy. And um, <laughs> just to bring this up, the, the QRZ commentary that's been going on has been absolutely nuts. Uh, there's 26 pages of comments when I pulled it up this morning and I did read through them. And they're all... so. I, I'm not I'm not shaming or, or throwing uh, shade at uh, QRZ. There are points on both sides and and fairly nuanced. Some not so much, but um, it's a, it's an interesting discussion. Lively when it it doesn't dip into the politics of it. So I would recommend people go check that out too. Uh, I haven't dipped into it, but I found the whole thing interesting. I will uh, be posting the Zoom link at the end of this live stream, and I'll take questions on the tiny essay, but I'll also take comments on this. Um, they're going to talk about it tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but they're going to talk about it sometime on the YouTubers bunch, and it, it's going to be an interesting discussion. Um, I, I'm against it. I'll just say that. I don't see where the money's going into. Um, the FCC's not really been there. They get congressional support to begin with to run, and then obviously offset by the fees and the licensings they put out, and I just don't see amateur radio as being a part of that. I, I don't know why it needs to be. So those are my thoughts. 
Okay. So let's talk about this tiny essay. Just like that. All right, let me slide over here. I'm taking the mic with me. Here we go. Also, I'm kicking my cooler out of the way. All right, so the tiny essay. I'll put my beer right here. The tiny essay is kind of like um, its brother. Let me grab the nano VNA. So the nano VNA vector network analyzer, which I, I've talked about, um, I did a video on it. I, I've done a whole bunch of stuff on the nano VNA. This is a network vector analyzer. Its job, it can function as an antenna analyzer. But generally, you can use this to test things like filters, anything where you're, you're going to pass something through and have it be received on the other end and see what the difference is. Or in the case of uh, an antenna analyzer, what your, your ohm resistance is going to be on a Smith chart, what your standing wave ratio is going to be based off of the frequency you want to transmit on. That's what a VNA does. An essay, short for spectrum analyzer, is a different animal entirely. An essay is where you would attach an input of some kind, either on the high frequency side or the low frequency side. Not all of them do that, but uh, this one does. And you get a readout of where the um, signal is in however strength in dB. You can adjust the, the output, but dB is generally what we do. Now, this is the kit you get. You get um, a USB cable. USB-C is the charging, which is nice. You get an SMA barrel connector. You get a whip antenna, which we are going to use to great effect here shortly. And you get two leads. Um, and you're going to need to use at least one of these to calibrate this thing. Now, I'm already seeing comments. Wow, this is way cheaper than a bench um, a bench SA. And, and you're right. And really quick before I, I, I wanted to show you that. Let's, let's go over here really quickly so I can show you all about that. This is the pre-sale price for the um, Tiny SA, $45 for this. So kind of similar to the price of the Nano VNA, and it's specifically a spectrum analyzer, which to me I find is probably going to be more useful uh, for a lot of people in how they ham radio. All right. So starting this thing off, a little bit different than the Nano VNA. It's going to put you right into, into spectrum analyzer mode. All right. So first time opening this thing up, this is not, I'm saying if you were, you're going to connect the leads here. It's got a little guitar pick uh, type stylus. I am, uh, anyway, it, it's kind of weird. The, the thing's right side is, is where it's at, but let's go ahead and go to config. You see that okay? Is it too bright? Might be too bright. Can you see that it says config on the screen? I hope you can. If you're addicted, who was that? It said, I'm addicted. David Brown. If you're addicted to test equipment, then, oh man, this thing's like right up your alley. Okay, that's a lot better. Okay, we're going to go to, um, let's see, self test first. Let it run through its self test, which you can see it. It's going to start doing its self-test. I did this when I took it out of the box. I'm just going to walk you through the whole thing. It's pretty interesting. It's a pretty cool device. All right, so there's the self-test complete. So you can tap the screen. Done. It'll drop itself down here. So we're going to go back to config. We're going to do level cal. OK, so under level cal, Ooh, it's hunting for focus. Focus, my dude. There we go. Let me go ahead and, while you're focused, let me just take you out. There you go. No more autofocus. We'll just go manual. I'm going to hit calibrate. So it's going across the bottom here, and it'll do its calibration. It says calibration complete. Pretty easy. And that's pretty much all you have to do. This unit is now calibrated. So I will take off the jumper cable now there's two connectors there's a low side and a high side 
High frequency will take you up to a maximum of 900 megahertz. I believe it's uh, 300 megahertz through 900 megahertz. We'll check that in a little bit. Uh, but it is lower resolution. It's going to be uh, considerably slower. This will run all the way down to 1 megahertz, actually 1 kilohertz, up to um, 300, at which point you've got to switch over to the high side. So you go to low here. We're going to connect our antenna. And we're going to do a couple examples with this. So uh, make sure you stick around. And so there's the, there's your little guy connected. All right. So we're already getting some funkiness going on. It's uh, way down, though. It's negative 60 dB. Um, and it's somewhat probably based off of my being close by. Not so much. So let's show you where we're at. So it's starting at 0 hertz, and it's going all the way up to 350 megahertz. So there's your actual qualifier. See, I didn't even need to look it up. 0 to 300. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit more for you. Yeah, that's crispy. Can I make the text a little bit? There we go. Whew, that's nice. That glass, baby. Um, OK. So here's my here's my Yesu FT3. Obviously, the focus is going to be a little wacky because it's really tight in. I'm on Simplex here. I'm going to key up Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. And there it dropped away. All right, so we're going from 0 to 350 megahertz, and it showed up around, where is it? Right there. It's showing 146.560, somewhere around there, jumping around. Okay, so that that's it on what were you, no low power, medium power. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, so that's kind of what you would do um, with a, a spectrum analyzer. Is you would you could definitely connect a little whip to it, but ideally you would be connecting something like this lead into the actual radio, and that allows you to test things like spurious emissions. And we did that already with the. Um, SDR Play RSP1A. But there's a lot more you can do with this because this is a freestanding unit. It doesn't need to be connected to anything. And I'll show you what you can do that's, that's really, really cool. And, and we're going to be using it a lot um, for the rest of this video. So if you go touch on the screen pretty much anywhere, it brings up this menu system. And we're going to go back because we're, we're kind of deep in. So here's the primary view of the screen. And we want to look at 146.520, which is where um, I'm going to be transmitting from. So we're going to go to frequency. We're going to go to center. And I'm going to go 146.522 megahertz, M for megahertz. OK. We've centered the frequency now. But I want to reduce this. Oop, didn't want to do that. Come back here, buddy. I want to uh, reduce the span to 10 Actually, we'll go 100 megahertz. OK, so we've reduced the span. It says 100 megahertz. And the center is 146.520. And I will go ahead and key up. And there we are. We're centered now. And if I unkey, it drops right away. Mr. Shadow 600 says, better use an attenuator to not overload the front end for a direct connection. Yes, sir. And uh, I did that on my video with the uh, SDR play. Let me slide this over so I can get it into view. This is a 10 watt 40 dB attenuator. So up to 10 watts of power output from your radio, this will give you 40 dBs of attenuate 40 dBs, 40 dB attenuation. So you prevent your um, your SA from getting blown out. We'll keep this around just in case we need to use it. Now as you noticed, I keyed up and you see that center frequency, but the second I let go, oh, it's gone. Well, how would this be useful in my tactical trash can? Well, let me let me pull out the pick again. Let me go back. Let me go to, I believe it's measure. Nope, it's not. It's marker. Nope, it's not. It's display? Nope, it's not. Where is it? Can Level. Is it level? Yeah, there. <laughs> All right, let me go back. So main, main screen, I click uh, back. We click on level. We click on calc, and then we click on max hold. OK, so that added a red line here, right? Now watch this when I key up. You ready for this? Here we go. 
Now we see the, the peak output on 146.520, and if I let go, it doesn't go away. So hypothetically, if you're, um, if you're looking at uh, the screen right here, the SA, the spectrum, the analyzer, the tiny SA is dropped down to negative 60 as its noise floor about. And my output on this radio over the air is about 5 watts, right? See, that's 10 right there. So what do you call that? How many dB is that? From 60 all the way up to about 10. That's the power that the, um, the antenna is receiving, the little whip. So what I'm going to do, just remember what that is, right? It was just below 10. Open air, the radio sitting right next to it, right? I'm going to put this in the trash can, and we're going to key up again. And we're going to try this with a couple of different frequencies because we can set this to whatever we want. Right now it's 146.520 is the center, and the span is 100 megahertz. So I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to go back. I don't know a better way of doing this. If somebody has, this, has one of these, you can tell me. Um, anyway, go to calc, and I'm going to take it off. Okay, so that drops it back down. Okay, I'm going to go back in, hit calc. I'm going to go to max hold again. All right, so we're now in max hold mode. So that yellow line is going to capture whatever the maximum output is, right? I need to make some space here because I'm pulling the trash can up. All right, we're gonna we're gonna roll back. Let's slide him over here. So no magic, no 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 uh, smoke and mirrors. All right, so I'm gonna pick up the SA. It's not gonna be out of view, hopefully, right? In the trash can. Right? You see it? <laughs> We're putting the lid on. And I will go to, what is this? Is this the wide desk? There's the wide view. Okay. We're sealed up. Here is my radio, my VHF radio. And I'm keying up. I'm transmitting, transmitting, transmitting. So we should be getting a peak on the SA. Uh-oh. Did I just lose my... I lost my overhead camera. Oh no, what happened? What just happened? Okay, well, hold on, I'm still here. <laughs> Why did it go away? Of course, it wouldn't be live if it didn't break. Oh, you got a buzzing sound. Okay, that's fine. Let's, uh, let's reconnect this really quick. Okay, we're reconnecting. So I'm still here. I'm not touching this. No, no smoke and mirrors. <laughs> there it is. All right, almost, almost. We're working on it. <laughs> I'll have a sip of beer as we're waiting for this to reconnect. <laughs> Woohoo! All right. Yeah, I got too close to the computer with it. Um, let's see if that worked. There we go. All right. So uh, let's see what happened. Oh. Not a damn thing. So you're going straight in. Here we go. Ready? Enhance. 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 So there was the peak. Negative 70. Uh, negative 60 was a little, little bat mound. So we went from 5 dB... Um, direct to the whip with it inside the trash can I don't even know that it actually identified okay so now the lids open ready I'm gonna PTT the mic ready here we go there it is it's actually attenuated it some it's below zero now so there you go you can see it's still working I just PTT the uh, the HT so the the can the trash can the trash can is working. We got, um, what is that? Over 60 dB attenuation, close to 70 dB, which is great. I'm, uh, I'm very satisfied by that, very happy. Uh, I thought that was really cool. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch over to 6 meters now. But before I do that, okay, so that's a proof of concept. Let me, let me jump back over to the desk. Or let me sit for a second. 
bring you along with me here. Now, I, I, I wait. I wanted to show you this proof of concept before I do this next thing. Where is it? So some of you are already saying, can you put your cell phone in there? Can you put your... Uh, your radio in there or you know like a, a receiving radio so yeah you can um, but let me show you this so we're looking at um, this was a talk that was done and I'll, I'll show you the information on it later but the the conservative hardening target is 100 DB worth of attenuation from 1 kilohertz to 10 gigahertz Obviously, I'm not testing 10 gigahertz. I'm not testing a lot of other frequencies. Uh, I started with 2 meters. I've done 10 meters. We'll do 6 meters right now, and I've gone through a lot of HF. Um, but a you know less stringent protection from EMP hardening would be 50 dB from 14 kilohertz to 1 gigahertz. So that's a much smaller set, less stringent. And that number is specifically for things like small electronics, like ham radios, assuming they're disconnected from power point, uh, from power connections, from antennas. Antenna, you got to get your antenna off right before you're packing this whole thing up. So 50 dB from 14 kilohertz to one gigahertz, you're probably fine. Uh, Lee Harrell says, first thing that comes to mind is using the tiny SA for hunting down QRM in and outside of the shack. Yes. Yes, um, I would add the attenuator though. So I would add that 40 dB attenuator on and then absolutely go track that thing down. Uh, <laughs> David Brown in the chat says, hit the can with the herf gun. Yes, sir. And that would be a lot of fun. Uh, it would, but I don't want to do it in and around my house. <laughs> uh, personally, personally, I don't want to be involved in that. So that was my target, was I, I thought I'd be able to hit 50 dB without any problem. Realistically, I'm getting close to 70 dB. And I think I think the trick was that seal, which I'll show you on the lid right now before we switch to 6 meters. Now, I know, um, I know there are a lot of opinions on EP, uh, EMP. We did a live stream on EMPs. I had a lot of fun talking about EMPs. Everybody has an opinion when it comes to EMP. The reality is, is that a lot of electrical equipment is not as susceptible. Small electronics is not as susceptible as like what the big concerns are, like the power, you know, industrial complex of how we distribute power across the grid and all that stuff. Those are the big worries. Most of our electronics are going to be okay, assuming they're disconnected from power disconnected from any antennas okay where am i on my power oh good i got 98 96 percent on that camera right now very good mm. if anybody uh the baron six ooh, so whoever posted the walmart link don't go to don't do that one in fact delete yourself uh that is very expensive for that six gallon can the link that i have on amazon is cheaper I actually bought mine at Lowe's. You can also find them at Home Depot, and they're also cheaper that way. So I would recommend you get the Barons that way. And I, I don't have the link in the description on this video. I should have done that. You can go to my Amazon store, which is linked in the description, and that will, um, if you go to the EMP kit or something along those lines, that will show you the trash can. If you go to the EMP video, which I posted this week on Thursday, uh, that also has the link with all the other links for all the research that I did and, and all the thoughts that I had. Okay, so, all right, I'm gonna switch over to six meters right now. That is 100 watts. Actually, I'm gonna dial this, I'm gonna dial it back considerably. I think the antenna is way poorly matched for um, six meters, but still I'm gonna dial back the antenna and, and we'll, we'll start ramping it up until we get to the point that we're getting dangerous with the SA because you can overload the SA. You don't want to go over 10 dB. In fact, if you really want to get precise with um, any kind of measurements, and I'll save this for switching over here. If you want to get precise with any kind of measurements, you actually want to keep the um, output around negative 30 dB. Negative 30 dB is where you want to be. That will reduce uh, any of the artifacts, mixing artifacts that can happen um, with the SA. So let's go ahead and clear this out, kind of like we did before. So we're going to test six meters right now. 
all right? Six meters FM, so I'm gonna be on simplex. I am using my 7300 to do that, so we're gonna be firing out of the step IR, which is basically overhead. All right, so calc, we're gonna go off. So we're just back to live view of the tiny SA. Don, well, the this thing is basically right below the step IR, so let's see what happens um, at 50 watts. Maybe I'll blow it up. You guys love that, right? So we're gonna go frequency. Oh, that was not what I wanted. We're gonna go frequency, center. We're going to five, one, dot, five, four, and then M for megahertz. All right, so we are at 5154 for megahertz at 100 megahertz span. All right, it looks pretty quiet. Uh, I will now hit the foot pedal. Let's see what happens. Huzzah! Actually, that's, I'm assuming that's a, wow, 20 dB is even gonna, isn't even gonna hit. Um, that was negative 20. Let me, okay, let me, uh, let me amp up the power. All right, twice the power, here we go. Shazam! Still negative 20, so not great. Um, so we we got a reading there, negative 20. Oh, cool. So Glendon Blount says, Baron 6 gallon at Lowe's is 1598. Yeah, go with that. Although definitely make sure that it is the galvanized steel one. You don't want the aluminum, okay? So yeah, don't don't pay the, the exaggerated prices unless you can't get them. And in that case, if you buy from my Amazon, that would be cool because I did review it. But hey, I save your money. Go get it from Lowe's. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing again. Let's go ahead and... There's no trickery, uh, except I need to put it into calc mode. Max hold. All right, max hold is on again. No trickery. Just slide right up there. Bring back my bucket. Oh. Oh, almost lost it here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. In the bucket. Okay, centered right in the bucket. We're also going to dispel a myth that if you uh, have a ground connection, that it'll do a better job. So that's a big neodymium magnet that I'm going to use to connect a ground line. Maybe we're going to dispel a myth. I don't actually know the answer to that yet. We'll see. All right, here we go. Um, I am keying up. Shazam! Transmitting, transmitting. Here we go. And Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, doing a radio test. Radio test. Okay. That is that. Uh, and the camera did not die, so we're good. All right, we're back over here. Look at that. Nothing. You're going in the can. Here we go. Nothing. So that was, where are we at right now? That's below 80 dB and uh, negative 20 was what we saw. So we're, we're in the can, the lid is off. I'm gonna key up, here we go, ready? Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, radio test. So negative 30 dB, so that's 10 dB just by being in the can of, uh, of attenuation, okay? So it's working, guys, it's working. <laughs> I am, I am so excited. I am so excited. Um, so there's my, I see this as an absolute win. Absolutely a win. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm very happy that that worked. Um, let me show you really quick too while I got the camera on here. So here's the uh, the lid. So there's the seal. It is a wire mesh, a very fine mesh seal that goes all the way around. I kind of slammed it in there. And that's what we want. So we hit, we're hit we hitting our attenuation, which is exactly what I wanted to be. Now, uh, again, I, I'm not uh, transmitting. I'm not transmitting on anything higher than 70 centimeters. In fact, we should probably do that. So let's do that now. All right, we're gonna clear this out again. Lid should have the metal it's made out of on it. Um, the lid. Now, um, I don't, I don't know about that. I'm looking at the lid. I don't see it. 
I was going to say that the uh, it is indeed the one I have is indeed is indeed galvanized steel. I checked it and obviously it is ferrous because there is a uh, it's magneta. It's it will accept a magnet, ferrous metal. So let's take calc off. All right, we're going to go to frequency. Four four six. Four. Is that right? I think it's right. Oh my God, what happened? Center is 100. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I think I may, oh, you know what? Cause it's, um, you gotta switch to the high side. Okay, I'll show you how to do that right now. Let's get it out of this freak out mode. We're gonna go back. We're gonna go to preset. I'm gonna set it back to load startup. All right, we're gonna go to config. Wait, nope, one of these. Now I forget how to do it. Hold on, hold on. Oh, I forgot how to do it. I got to input in high side. Preset. It's not preset. It's not there. Display. It's not there. Nope. Nope. Oh my gosh, I forget. There it is. Okay, wait, hold on. Let's go back then. How did we do that? I don't want to make sure I don't leave you hanging. Oh, mode. Duh. Okay, so off the main menu, click it. Go to mode. So right now it's low input, low meaning low frequency incoming on the low side. We want to switch to high input. While I'm looking at the screen, I, I want to show you that um, it also does output in low and high. So this is actually kind of like a signal generator as well. So we're going to go high in. Not going to be as good performer, but to be honest, I don't really care. And thank you for everybody watching. I, I, I hope this is exciting. <laughs> Maybe not exciting, but interesting might be the better, um, the better word. All right, so we're right here. See how slower the resolution became, that, that stuttering? So we're going to change this to uh, frequency, center, 446 megahertz. So there's the center. And I want the span, again, to be 100. I haven't done this yet, so we're entering, uh, we're entering uncharted territory. So I'm going to go ahead and set my... All right, so we are on, nope. Well, that will work. Yeah, we'll just use that. It's on a tone setting. You know what, let me turn that off. Okay, now we're on simplex. Whoa, wait, that was too high. Let's get that vertical again. That was too close, too close, too close. A little too high, okay. Um, so there's your, there's your reading. That's about where I have this, by the way. It's just off to the side. So let's pull the can up. Let me go all the way out. That's where it's been this whole time, that, that radio. Here we go. In the, oh, we gotta set the... We're gonna go to level, calc max hold all right in the can putting the lid on i'll try not to hit my camera literally the lens is like right underneath this in fact let me show you 
this is my this is my camera lens for the vertical cam <laughs> the vertical cam shot I'm doing right now. Okay, here we go. And a one and a two and a three. And let's say that's enough. All right. Here we go. Flipping back. Ugh. Come on. <gasps> oh no, we actually got a hit, guys. So we got so it was over, it was about 10 dB. Um, in fact, I should probably hit it with an attenuator. It was about 10 dB open air, and it got into the tune of just over, close to 70 dB. So we'll call that 68 dB. So that's still about 70 dB of uh, attenuation. Pretty good. And let me go ahead and hit it up again. Here we go. One, two, three. And there it is. It's over the top. Did I just murder my, uh, nope, seems we're okay. <laughs> All right, so there's that. All right, so we've tested two meters, six meters, and two meters. Wait, uh, 70 centimeters, two meters, and six meters doing our test here. And you can see we, we, we went over a little bit. It's, it's unhappy. Uh, but we're we're okay. Hopefully it's not dead. And back to it. Cool. All right. This could be used. As, so yeah, a lot of lot of chat. Which one is better for EMP? I don't know what the question is. KD nine PBQ. That might not be to me. Let's take a little a little beer here. Um. Yeah, so a lot of comments I got on, hey, you need to put um, you need to put something on the inside of your can, and if it's truly a, a Faraday cage, you don't need to. If it's truly a, an electrically closed unit, that's not really how it works. I mean, to a degree you can. That just adds to the attenuation, but if it's completely sealed then it's it, that's not as important. Um, obviously, we had a little bit of an issue, though, with the 70 centimeters. But let's test. Let's go back to 2 meters, because then I can be on the low mode, which is I'm, I'm a little worried the high mode might blow this thing up. So we're going to go low mode again. People keep talking about seeing my chair back. That's kind of an interesting thing to think is funny. I don't know. All right, we're going to go to Somebody said but it's not completely sealed without your metallic fiber. Yes. Uh so yeah, SC flowers, you absolutely need to have the seal that I have added. So we're going to go back. So we're on uh let's see. We're going to set the frequency Center back to 146.52 megahertz. We're going to set the span to 1 megahertz. All right, so we're back on. Um, let's go back here. We'll go ahead and hit it. Yep, right there in the middle. Okay, very good. You saw the activity. So now we're going to add, we're going to turn on the calc for max hold we're going to put it in the trash can and this time i'm going to connect a magnet um, holding a ground line to the body of the can all right I'll, sh I'll walk you through the whole thing again i don't know why i'm doing all this like magicians you see my hands jimmy you see i'm not uh not trying to swindle you with my magics like wh why would i have i have no reason to like pretend that this is working better than it is or isn't uh anyway okay so uh we're gonna <laughs> switch over to uh the can here i'm gonna put the lid on can view all right we're gonna push really hard make sure it's sealed mind you i'm not even using the the um the lid which gives you some more clamping force i have a, a lead a y oh you can't really see that wire, can you? Mm, anyway, it's in my hand. It, the chat room's blocking it. I realize. I'm gonna get the. I'm gonna get the uh, the can really close. And make.
make a connection here. Hold on. Hopefully. Okay. I got the wires spread out on the can. And here we go. I mean, it, it didn't even like... <laughs> it didn't even really register. So I don't know. Here we go. One, two, three. I don't think it's going to change anything. I should actually switch it over to 70 centimeters, to be honest, because that actually did show something. In fact, I'll probably going to do that. I screwed myself up on this one. Yeah, I have to be more consistent. Yeah, so no change, but that was what we saw before. So that's not going to work. I immediately regret my decision to do that. Immediately. All right, stay there. Here we go. I'm gonna switch this over back into high mode. Okay. Should have just done this in the beginning, right? Okay. So we're going to set the start frequency or center frequency to 446 megahertz. We're going to set the span to 100 megahertz. Um, quick tap. Yep, there it is. Wait, what happened there? It's only 30 now. Maybe I broke it. <laughs> I might have already broke it. Oh, because I'm not on the... Wait, what? Hold on. Oh, it must be a harmonic. I must be getting a harmonic. That's probably what's going on. It's gonna blow its doors off. Boom, okay, let's not do that for too long. We're gonna go back, we're gonna go to level, we're gonna go to calc, we're gonna go max hold. All right, max hold is on. Bring in the can back here, let's see the can. Hand model. I'm a hand model. Into the can you go. Oh, that 40, uh, yeah, that 70 centimeters is probably messing with you guys. Sorry about that. Apologies. Oh my god, how did I get the magnet there? Alright, I got the neodymium magnet connected. Alright, ne neodymium magnet is connected, holding the ground in place on the galvanized trash can. I may lose you for a second. Everybody hang on. Here we go. Alright, that was that. All right, I transmitted. Everybody still there? We're still there. Was there buzzing? I'm assuming there was buzzing. Okay, I'll flip it. Here we go. The unveiling. Whoa. I didn't expect that. Uh... Is it still... Okay. The, there was nothing. So the grounding might have helped. Let me go ahead and key up on 70 centimeters with the lid open. There it is. Uh, wow. Wow. Maybe the... Well, we'll try it again. What the heck? Let's try it again. People are saying they didn't hear the buzz. So we'll take it off. We'll go calc. Nope. Okay, we're back on calc maybe it's uh maybe the can is just absorbing all that stray rf huh come on buddy okay the ground line is attached I will pull the radio over here. See? No smoke and mirrors. So you can see the light. Here we go. Ready? Ah! Oh, there is an offset, it looks like, but it's still going to get picked up. Was there buzzing? Uh, 
Okay, yes, buzz. Yes, buzz. Here we go. Oh, yeah, still there. In fact, it's the same. So maybe I just didn't hit it? That was weird. Anyway. Yeah, so uh, grounding did nothing. That was about what I expected. Ooh, that was too far. Too much enhancing. I enhanced too much. Cool. Well, again, um, I see this as an absolute win, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I am so satisfied with this. Now, I, again, I'm not going to pretend like, oh, well, you know, 60, 60 dB is completely EMP proof. No, I would never say that. But that was absolutely a lot of fun. I had fun doing that. All right, turn that guy off. Take a sip of my beer. A couple of other things. Let's let's just um, let's poke around with this guy a little bit more. Whoop, whoop. All right, so we'll take it out of this mode here again. Calc off. Let's see, what are some other things we can do? We can attenuate. You can add a 25 to 40 dB attenuator, which you may want to do. Um, that can that can drop things down a bit. If you do 0 dB, what does that do? I will leave that off. Let's go back. Change the mode back to low. Cool. Man. Very good. And let's go back to, so under frequency, you can set a, hey, come on. You can set a start and stop frequency. So where you want the frequency set to begin or end. Obviously we were using center um, and span to control how big it is. Spur removal, I didn't have much uh, use for this. Somebody said under $300. No, man, wait, I don't, they're talking about something else. I was gonna say, um, this thing's 50 bucks. <laughs> You can add, let me go back, where is it? Come on. Display. You can store traces, which um, I understand that it's for later use. You can actually use that to like phase out something. I haven't played around with that yet. I've just been trying to mess with my EMP can. Um, you can though, if so if I keyed up on, on two meter simplex, Testing. There we go. Am I back? No. Test. 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 Is that me? It's on the <laughs> it's on the wrong audio device now. Whoa, it's too loud. Way too loud. <laughs> hey, it wouldn't be a good uh, it wouldn't be a good stream if I didn't completely blow something up with RF, right? <laughs> Oh, is it one ear? Oh, that's okay. I know what happened. Hold on. Okay, what a pain. Hold on. I got to switch it out.
<laughs> How about now? No? Shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, there I am. Hold on. Right, we'll fix this really quick so I'm not on uh, one ear. How'd I do that? Speakers, desktop. Let's see. Which one am I on? I am on speakers, default. Why am I on that? I don't know. Here we go. How about now? Okay, now I'm in both ears. <laughs> okay, I should be in. Uh, you know what? We're not going to break it any further. Uh, I'm just going to post the link in here to the Zoom. I will take uh, your call-ins right now. Call in through via Zoom. Double audio now. Okay, hold on. Burp, burp, burp. How about now? Should be better? Should be better, hopefully. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Fun. Very fun. Oh, I hear myself. I see what happened. I have to fix it. This is not right. Because I'm hearing myself now. You can actually hear the mice clicks or the mouse clicks. So what did I do? I really screwed this up. Let me just turn this off. I don't want that either. That's not right. It's very funny. That's not right. Hold on. Testing. Test. Test. That's not right. Hold on. <laughs> testing how about now okay that should be better can you hear me is that right that should be good what a mess i don't even know i'm gonna be able to call anybody or let anybody in now we'll see oh we got waiting room people hold on admitting one here we go i don't know if i'll be able to hear N7CCW, can you hear me? Uh, let's see. Say, talk again. N7CCW can hear you. We got it. Okay, good. You're you're making it in the stream. Do you have a video by chance? Looks like you don't. No, no big deal. Not on this one. That's okay. Go ahead. Ask your question. How's it going? Glad you stuck through it. I don't have any questions. I'm just enjoying the show. <laughs> Thanks for watching, man. Hey, you know, uh, some of my best shows are the ones where I, I have all kinds of problems. I posted a link in the, d uh, the comments for people that want to call in to the Zoom, by the way. Um, if you want to hang on, we're, I'll add some more people. Maybe they have a question. Hey, I, I got a name here. Let's, let's admit. Uh, let's see if he gets through here. Rolly, is that you? Yeah. You can hear me? Wow. I can. Uh, go ahead and mute your mute my video on YouTube. Oh, okay. Uh, I can stuff things up just as well as you can. <laughs> That's right. There you go. Oh, very good. How you doing? You got like something yeah, going on in the background, like sports or something. Curious, really, just a... You still there? Yeah, there's. Uh, oh, oh, 
I'll, I'll shoot out to somewhere where it's a bit quieter. How you doing? Yeah, just watching your stuff up and uh, make, uh, yeah, pretty good things, Josh. Just watching your stuff up and, and making sure that I don't do the same. <laughs> no, man, you, you got to do it. Uh, particularly if you have RF in and around your stream gear, it's inevitable that it's going to happen. It's just how fast you can recover. I, I'm pretty good at recovering. <laughs> Oh, it's not bad. I uh, um, um, watch the show without a stuff up, eh? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So how how's uh so Rolly, by the way, Rolly or Rolly, is uh he's also a YouTuber, um, and he works a lot with Callum DX Commander. He's been on a couple of his videos, and you make the the Rolly coil, right? <laughs> yeah, that's gonna stick with me now forever, isn't that's it? That's it. Yeah, yep. uh, it's a. It's a, um, a coil which uh, basically uh, loads up the 40 meter element on one of Callum's um, uh, DX commanders. It'll work on the DX commander or the DX, uh, the um, expedition model. Mm -hmm. So uh, this coil, uh, just put it on the bottom of uh, either one of those two antennas, add the uh, 40 meter element, the, the regular 40 meter element on top, and um, uh, where you go on, you're uh, up and going on 80 meters. Now, there's a bit of a caveat there, <laughs> as always. The bandwidth is uh, narrow uh, um, there, but so uh, uh, I put three taps on the thing. So choose where you want to be, uh, CW, say mid-band or SSB. Or if you've got a um, uh, modern rig, you know, with a tuner in it, of course, just pick the middle tap and let the rig go mm -hmm. flatten it out, you know, with, it, with the internal tuner does, does well. But uh, yeah, I've uh, I've worked literally worked the whole world uh, on uh, on that uh, configuration. Just works well. Very good. Uh, everybody that's waiting in the waiting room, hang tight. We'll we'll get you in there in a second. Just hang on. Um, yeah. Did, did you have a question or anything? No, no. Just being nosy. Oh, right on. Uh, I'm going to add some more people in here, and and we'll take a couple of questions. And and if you've got an answer, feel free to jump in. So let's take. Uh, HA5RV is joining. I could open my video, but then you'd just be seeing me bounce back. So nobody has their video, huh? Why is no video? Did I do that? I might have done that. Oh, see, there, there we go. <laughs> HARV has a video. Very good. Yeah, hold on. I'll, I'll give you something better than that. Operator name is Stuart. Hey Stuart, how are you doing today? I'm um, good, thanks. Well, it isn't today here; it's uh, it's tomorrow for you. Yeah. It's, uh, three three a.m. here. <laughs> oh, right on. Uh, so man, we've got we've got Rolly and Stuart. You're both over on that side of the world. Right. I'm in I'm in Budapest right now. Oh, you're in Budapest. Oh my gosh. Okay, never mind. Wow. Right on. How's it going? Uh, uh, it's pretty good, pretty good. Um, I do have a question, and mm -hmm. uh, I remember you said you should get the galvanized bucket or the uh, trash can, not the aluminium one. Yeah. And I'm really curious to know why, because I would have thought logically the aluminium one would be better because it would conduct better than steel, but for some some reason that isn't the case. So yeah, or so is it? <laughs> Again, I, I'm not completely. I'm, I don't stand completely with what my answer is, but um, a EMP is going to be an electromagnetic wave, and aluminum is a non-ferrous metal. Ah, okay. And so it's so, the magnetic, not the electro part. That's my feeling, but I don't have an experiment to test that with. So I'm just going with the galvanized at this point, assuming that that's going to do a little bit better job. I could be wrong. In fact, I'll take comments above or people watching this after the fact. You can tell me what you thought uh, on that. You know, that that's kind of where I'm thinking. That's where I'm going with this. Okay. Maybe we have to put an aluminium inside of a galvanized steel bucket. Uh, 101 blog says EMP is an electric field, an electromagnetic pulse. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Magnetic's in the name. <laughs> How is it electromagnetic then? <laughs> I'm just reading the comments while while we're talking, but yeah, that that's kind of my thoughts. But 
you know, hey, if I'm wrong, I don't have a problem being wrong. Tell me in the comments. Interesting. Maybe we can test it with a magnetic loop. Uh, yeah. In fact, I, 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 I can do that on a video. I'm not going to do it right now, but I got a loop behind me that, that could be a lot of fun to test that with. I could put that mm. sucker right on there and, and blast it. Yeah. And I see in the comments, somebody said aluminium doesn't conduct very well. It's true, but steel is even worse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very good. So the, the other thing is uh, you can buy these things to protect your credit cards. And uh, the old credit cards were magstripe, so it was for protecting against that. So I seem to recall that uh, the material they use was more magnetic than it was conductive. Mm hmm Although aluminium foil works. Sure. Uh, that's true, too. Yeah. Well, uh, it's an interesting topic. I, I'll just say what I, I am. This is what I have done. We did a test, a kind of test uh, with it's a galvanized can. And we're showing, you know, 65, 70 dB of attenuation. That's better than the lighter side of EMP shielding. So I would be inclined to go with that. Yeah, looks pretty good so far. I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm going to add somebody else in here. Uh, let's see. Cruise Giles iPad. How's it going? Make sure you mute your, uh, your audio there. On the stream side if you haven't. Sounds like he's connecting to audio, so we'll hang tight for a minute. We're a little past the hour, but that's okay. I don't mind answering some questions. And I will mention this for the people that are still watching. We're going to do the Discord after chat, so if you are so inclined, the link in the description will take you to the Discord server for the Ham Radio Crash Course. And if you scroll down to the bottom, the live stream area, there is a voice chat, uh, and there is a text chat where we will continue this conversation and have many other topics of discussion. Cruz Gile is having problem with audio. It looks like you gotta you gotta call. Oh, did you make it, Cruz? In the yeah, meantime, I'm here. Oh, there he is. Hey, how's it going? Doing all right. Thanks for all your help getting me ready for the test. Oh, right on. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching the show. Testing out Zoom so that I can do it remotely. Oh, very good. Do you have a question? Um, well, no, not really, except uh, when are you going to start on the general? Because that's what I'm working on. I'm already done. There's already a video series on the general. Are you serious? Yeah, I yeah. did it last year. I'm... Excellent. <laughs> so that's an easy answer. Everybody asks me when I'm going to do the extra. I don't know. I, I, maybe one day. I don't know so much about the extra. When I run out of video ideas, I'll hit up extra, I guess. But I'm uh, I'm very far away from that happening. <laughs> Good. Thanks again. I also I do have one more question. Yeah, right on. Go I for tried it. to uh, I tried to use the uh, the donate button to come up with three fifty seven, and I hadn't figured out how to do it. It always rounds it up to ninety nine. How are these people entering their ammo? I don't know. Maybe it's because they're at seven dollars. It let you know if you're if I don't know. I don't know. But three fifty seven also. So that's an easy solution to that problem. Just remove the decimal point. You'll be all set. I see. I see. Well, I'll, I'll try that. Hey, thanks again, man. Right on. <laughs> Very hey, good. Josh, without too much effort, you can make a Zoom DXEC soon. Uh, there you go. Pretty close. Yeah, I just need to get... Uh, well, get you're 3% of the way already. Yeah, I just need Africa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's... Uh, who else we got? David O'Brien coming in. David, you're muted. You might have to. Yeah, I am. There you go. How's it going? Doing good. How about yourself? There you go. How's it going? Oh, you got to mute the live stream there. There you go. How's it going? Oh, you got to mute the live stream there. Give me a second, and I would do that. Um, yeah. Why don't I do that? Um, yeah. Got it? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I just became a tech last last Saturday. Mm -hmm. and got a Kenwood THD74A um, tri-band. Okay. 
the question I'm having is, I use Mac computers. The softwares I see that are out there, because I want to get into APRS and um, DTML. Mm -hmm. And are there... Are all the softwares out there mainly for Windows operating system? So to, to your last question, yes, most of the software is for Windows. With that said, an APRS client that works on Mac is called Yak. Yet another APRS client. Yet another okay. APRS. Yeah, Y-A-A-C, Yak. A Yankee Alpha Alpha Charlie. Hey, um, Jess. Did you hear Hello? that? You got it. Yeah. That was what. That was what. Y, double A C H. No, just uh, Yankee Alpha Alpha Charlie. Yankee Alpha Alpha Charlie. Okay, got it. Yeah, and that will work. Uh, that will also work on your Raspberry Pi if you're using uh, Raspbian or Linux. There's a Linux uh, version of that too, and that will work. Um. Somebody says Pocket Packet on the Mac App Store. I don't know if that runs in Mac OS or if that's iOS. That's James Hannibal. James, you can reply. If that's Mac OS, then that, that might work. Okay. Okay, then. I thank you very much. Mm hmm Feel free to stay on the line here. Um, oh, we lost the other... I think we lost the other person. No big deal. All right. Um, well, I'm going to take it as that because we're, we're already 15 minutes over the hour. So I'm going to get started with the um, – oh, so there you go. Somebody said Pocket Packet is a good Mac client too. So, okay, Pocket Packet, all one word for Mac yeah. client. I use that on iOS. I did that on a video I did for APRS, uh, Pocket Packet. And it's it has a really nice user interface. But, um, yeah, I, I haven't um, – I haven't played with it on the Mac OS side of the house. Yeah, I mean, it's like um, we use Mac because it's a lot more secure than all the hacks for the, uh, for like, I mean, Microsoft OS. So mm -hmm. that's kind of why our company uses it. I really? think you very much, sir. Well, thanks for calling in to the Zoom. Thank you all for calling into the Zoom. I'm going to wrap up the show, though. So I'm going to close it here. Thank you for calling in. Uh, Rolly and Stuart and David, thank you very much. Thanks very much for having us on. All right. Take it easy, all. See ya. <laughs> Cheers, Josh. Catch you. See ya. See ya. Oh, very 73. good. 73. <laughs> very, very good. That was a lot of fun. Very cool. I'm going to end the call there, though. Thanks, everybody. All right. Okay. Well, that's going to pretty much do it for today. Uh, we had a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a good live stream if I didn't break something with RF. Again, uh, I am Josh KI6NAZ. Give me a thumbs up if you hadn't, because I'm going to Discord right now. If you want to join me over there, link is in the description. Consider subscribing. And before I go, I've got to give a big shout out and thank you to the patrons. Thank you all. Um, patron picks is next week, and the episode topic will be starting out in HF. I use the term etiquette. It's probably not the right term. It's really how do you use HF to uh, effectively communicate? How do you talk? What do you do? That kind of stuff. So we're going to be starting out with single sideband. I've done plenty of stuff on digital, so I'm trying to focus on single sideband uh, to, to do the rest of the show there. So make sure you check that out. That will be next week. Uh, the link is in the description for the Tiny SA if you want to follow along with that and read the Wikipedia there is a great groups.io that it, I actually was reading up on as I was getting ready to do this video. It was a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, so anime anime says, are you going to teach us why? I shouldn't have to teach you why. The why is because you can talk so much further. You can get so much further out. Yeah, so make sure uh, you follow for next week because that's where we're going to be doing, you know, getting started on HF. I'm assuming that you've probably watched some of my other videos where I show you, kind of talk about which radios to buy, which antennas to maybe put up, and that kind of fun stuff that goes along with it. So, you know, eh, it's something to check out. Uh, Killer Spud posted a link to magnets and eddy currents. This video is, eh, that's interesting. Maybe we could see how that would affect... Uh, a E M P. Yeah. Very good. Again, thank you to all the patrons. You guys uh, really make this whole thing work and allow me to do what I do. I, I do want to give a big shout out to the brew crew here. 
um, for a long time, you know, I, I was on that subscription service for beer, and they went belly up. So I have uh, some bottles that I got to do reviews of from the last couple of live streams, and I owe the entire brew crew an update on basically all the beer that I've had recently. I, I do reviews on that. So all the brew crew members, the review is coming up shortly. I'll be editing it probably tomorrow, and I will be uploading it to, uh, to the Patreon. So thank you for the support there. All right. That will do it. I had a lot of fun doing this one. The Tiny SA is super cool, and so if you're interested, I'm not affiliated with them at all. I, I'm just a big supporter of uh, of the whole concept of tiny uh, test equipment. I think it's super cool. You can put this thing in your pocket. How cool is that? Anyway, I will talk to you later. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ, 73.